Welcome back for part two of my conversation with John Walmsley here on Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Uh, last time we talked about uh, the release of John's new CD collaboration with Earl Hamner, A Joyful Noise, uh, which is available at johnwalmsleymusic.com. So if you want to give a listen to this very special recording, please do check that out. Also a reminder, as we are in the holiday season, my CD, Home for Christmas, is also available at my website, judynorton.com, or on any of your favorite streaming platforms. Uh, if you're enjoying these videos, please do hit like and subscribe. And now, welcome back, John Walmsley. I always thought you were so, and are so remarkable with all of your musical ability. Um, and of course, that that is a wonderful lead into uh, uh, share with us about this new CD, because it really sort of highlights and merges the two worlds, your incredible musicality and your career, your music career outside of the Waltons, and then this beautiful tribute to Earl Hamner. So tell us about your CD and how it came to be. Well, uh, first of all, I don't really think of it as my CD. I think of it as Earl's CD. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that came about, uh, he called me probably 20 years ago with this idea he had already written a script and it was called a joyful noise and he called me and he said um john it's your old uncle earl as he usually did and uh, i was always delighted to hear from him of course and uh we hadn't seen each other for a bit and he said you know he said i i really liked the job you did on the walton's christmas album mm. He said, I've, I've written a script, and he said, it's full of stories, and they're all based on the Baptist hymns that my family used to sing at our little church in Skyland. And he said, I wonder if, if this was something that we could partner on, that, that you could accompany me on guitar or piano and, and play, you know, snippets of these hymns. And I said, yeah, sure. That, that sounds great. I'd love to. And he said, you know, it, it doesn't, there's no hurry. He said, just, you know, do it in, in your spare time. Um, you know, when you ever, whenever you have a minute. Um, and that's how we left it. So, uh, oh, shortly after that, uh, we went into a recording studio in Studio City near Earl's office. And uh, he, he laid down his narration for the CD. And it was, it was just great. It was just great. And it reminded me of when I had seen him do that, his narration for the Waltons in the recording studio at Warner Brothers. It really brought back memories. And he did a beautiful job and they did a great job of recording his voice. It was just wonderful. We were, we were in and out. I mean, he was, you know, pretty much perfect the first time on everything. So anyway, I went away with a, a CD of the music um, the, the problem I had at the time was that I was going through a separation and divorce and a change of a boat mm -hmm. where I didn't have um, all my equipment, I didn't have a, a proper studio. Um, so it was a bit problematic. I was thinking, you know, how, how am I going to do this without my own space to work in? Um, I was doing a lot of other uh, outside musical jobs for people. And the nice thing about that was I was meeting a lot of new musicians. And uh, one who I really, really clicked with was Patrick Copeland, who is a phenomenal keyboard player and um, has done a lot of producing, engineering, uh, records for people, scoring films and so on. He had just moved his studio, he'd had a studio for years. He just moved it into his house. Mm. And I thought, gosh, this is the perfect environment for us to work in. You know, no, no time pressure. And, you know, we can, we can get together whenever we have a little, you know, a couple of hours, we can do some more work on. I think actually 
you know him because I think you and I did something at his place around that time. Was that when uh, we did that re re-recording of the goodnight song for Earl, yes. Earl Storyteller? Yes. Ah. Exactly. So anyway, we we developed this great musical rapport playing live and that carried over into the studio and we put Earl's voice up on the computer and you know you know what a, what a track looks like when you put it on the computer it's like a yeah. like a squiggly line going by right and, and this is sort of how people score films as well they put they put the film up on the screen um and then they play to it mm. and we didn't have a picture we just had the squiggly line of Earl's voice going by. Mm. We listened to Earl, we played, he played keyboards, I played stringed instruments, and we just bounced off each other and basically improvised. And we would take each each story and each hymn that Earl was describing and play around with it. And it would just, through the improvisation, it would just start to come together. When we had something we really liked, then we would overdub more instruments. Patrick would play organ, I'd play mandolin or um, gosh, string bass or banjo or, you know, a whole, whole number of things. So um, it just went really, really well. It, it just, it just worked. And we were very pleased with it. Um, we decided in the end that we would also record full length versions of some of the hymns that Earl was describing, because it seemed to, um, hearing little snippets of the hymns was almost a tease mm. for the listener. You know, like, oh, I love that one. And oh, why didn't they do the whole thing? So I thought, you know, it would be nice since we have the luxury of, of the length that a CD can accommodate, because you can put a lot more on a CD than you used to be able to do on an LP, mm. right? Because in the old days, it, the more you tried to put on an LP, the um, it would lessen the quality. Oh. The sound would deteriorate if you tried to get too much on an LP. Did not know it that. Doesn't happen, <laughs> it doesn't happen with CDs. It's, it's digital. And so CDs tend to be a lot longer than LPs did. So because we had the luxury of, of more time, um, we decided for the, for the fans' benefit, really, to record full-length versions of the songs. And um, the funny thing is, Earl Earl wasn't sure about that. He said, what, what, what are all these songs doing at the end of my CD? <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I, I explained what I just said. I said, you know, these days, um, recordings are much longer. We can get a lot more material on there. And I said, I think it would be uh, really nice for the fans to feel like they're really getting good value when they buy this CD. Mm -hmm. And that really appealed to Earl because he was, as you know, he was a very fair man. And he thought, yes, I, that's, I like that idea. You know, let's, let's make them feel like they, they, the CD is worth their money. Yeah. So, um, so that's what we did. Awesome. And at about that time, and about the time that we um, recorded the song for Storyteller, um, Earl became very involved in that. So we had the CD and, and he was very happy with it and his, his family liked it. Um, but he was very involved with, with the storytelling. He said, you know, I think we should wait until after Storyteller comes out. He said, that's, you know, it's kind of my history and a recap of, you know, everything I've done. And then the CD will be the next new thing mm. that I do. And I said, okay, well, that, that sounds good. And then, sadly, um, that was the time that Earl became very ill. And, you know, things it just went downhill. And, um, you know, work was, um, you know, not a priority at all at, at that point. So um, so a joyful noise was, was shelved, you know, temporarily, put on the back burner. And then, of course, Earl passed away. And then it would have been the absolute wrong time mm. to put it out. You know, um, I mean, that is what happens so often in, in entertainment. 
um, you know, when someone passes, everything they've done or everything that they haven't released yet comes out and, you know, it's put out and makes a lot of money, but it's, you know, not always in good taste to do that. So um, my, my primary consideration at that point was for Earl's family, you know, who we both know and love. And it was, it was certainly a hard time for, for all of us, for us, but, uh, you know, more so for, for Jane and Scott and Caroline. So a joyful noise was just shelved indefinitely mm. at that point. And, and years went by. And then recently I uh, contacted Scott and I said, what do you think about us putting your dad's CD out? You know, we can, we could put it out in, in 2023 and it will be, um, it would have been Earl's hundredth birthday. Mm. So it could be, it could be a nice tribute. And, and he really liked that idea. So that's what we did. Oh, wow. It, it, with the time that has passed, it's so lovely to now have this new opportunity to feel Earl, Earl's presence again, because that so rarely happens without something being manufactured. And the fact that this this wasn't something that you did that he wasn't involved with or that somebody else did to highlight him that he actually had it was his idea it was his involvement and that it really is an opportunity for people to appreciate him once more and his beautiful writing and the essence of who he was as a person and what he loved what was important to him so i i think it's absolutely lovely that it's that it's now going to be seeing the light of day and people are going to be able to share Earl, you know, again. So, yeah. I think so too. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy to, to be able to do this. Making the CD was an absolute labor of love. And I, and I felt, you know, in, in, in the beginning when we started and, and uh, certainly over the years, um, a real, sense of responsibility too I, I i really did not want to let earl down and i i knew that he wanted this to come out and that he wanted the cd to be something that we could share with his fans and, and something we could both be proud of and it is um in a strange way it, it might even be better i mean things work out the way they're supposed mm -hmm. to I think yeah. hopefully you know this is something that that people will really enjoy that they'll i think it will that that it will touch their souls in in the way that the show did and 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 be a little bit of the right medicine at the right time yeah it's you know we've built a legacy earl earl built a legacy and we are all along for the ride in that and and continue to contribute to that legacy in various different ways that we are able to so it is a beautiful extension of that and yeah and it's, it's it's nice to refer to it as an extension because it it is not the waltons mm -hmm. um the waltons are never mentioned but the fact that it is classic earl it's 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 classic Earl writing and his voice. And because of the fact that he's talking about his upbringing in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia during the depression, uh, and he's talking about his mother and his father and, and all these stories that are, as I say, not the Waltons, but, but very familiar, you know, the style is familiar and, and certainly the voice is familiar and, when I when I put the CD on and and I hear him say, when I was growing up in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia during the Great Depression, I thought no one could have so good a life, and it just it gives me goosebumps. Yeah, and yeah. you know to have that have that voice in the living room again is just it's just wonderful and. So I can, you know, I don't mean to, 
to sound like I'm I'm bragging about this CD because as I say, I don't think of it as my CD. I think of it as as Earl's CD and I'm just so happy to have played a part in bringing this to his fans. Um, and I, I think they'll really love it. Yeah. Well, tell tell us, everyone, how they can have their own copy of the CD. Well, at, at the, the present time, um, it is only available on my website, which is johnwalmsleymusic.com. So uh, there's a you know a little a little store where I've been selling CDs and and photos over the past few years, and now um, Earl's CD is prominently displayed there. So and so far, um, the initial reaction, the initial reviews from the few people have heard it, who have heard it, um, has been really good. So. Um, yeah, so we'll see. I don't know if it'll be available elsewhere in the future. There's no plans for that at this point, but um, but we'll see. Well, it is lovely. I really enjoyed listening to it, and it does. It just brings back so many wonderful memories for me, too. You know, hearing, hearing his voice is always warm and cozy. <laughs> yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for joining me for part two with John Walmsley. I will be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy and who knows what other special guests. See you soon. Thanks for watching.